Travis finally touched down in Australia, but where did he and Taylor go on their first day date in Sydney? Plus, Greta Gerwig reacts to her Oscars snub, and Misha Barton reveals she actually dated her OC co-star. Hi, welcome back to A Quick Look, a pop culture show. Where I'll be taking you through the biggest headlines in entertainment and current events. I'm Zoe Jewell, and let's just jump right into the show because, yes, we have more Taylor and Travis news to get into. I'm not saying that this is a Taylor and Travis show, but clearly this couple, this story has taken the world by storm over the last seven months or so, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. As I mentioned in the intro, Travis Kelsey has landed in Australia. He has joined Taylor on her tour. Thank God everyone can take a deep breath, sigh of relief. We talked about it yesterday. Travis had to do a bit of work commitments, but he made it, touched down. Now, as we all know, or I think most of us know, Australia is like 17 hours in the future, depending on where you are in in the world, at least for us here in the States. They are way far ahead in the future. And so Travis touched down in Australia Thursday morning Australia time, but it was more like Wednesday afternoon for us over here in the States. It was really funny how many, how much of the Australian news crews and, and like shows and they were all watching this unfold in real time, following his plane as it was landing into the airport, helicopter cameras taking photographs of him as he walked off the plane. They were acting like the president of some major country was arriving into Sydney. It was like that level of focus and attention. And it was even more funny because Travis brought with him one of his very good friends, his his name's actually Ross Travis. So his last name is Travis Kelsey's first name. Um, and he is a former football player himself. So he's also tall, kind of big. And as they were getting off the plane, the like newscasters, anchors um, in, down in Australia couldn't figure out which one of them was Travis. And so they were like, oh, that's Travis. And then I think Ross walked off the plane. They're like, wait, no, actually, is that is that Travis? They they couldn't they couldn't figure it out. And obviously, I mean, Swifties know who Ross is, but I don't think like the general public really knows who he is. So it is nice that Travis got to bring a good friend with him um, because we've seen Taylor bring so many of her good friends to Chiefs games over the course of the season and get to enjoy this whole experience with her friends. And so it's nice that now Travis can bring someone along too. And obviously that that travel down to Australia is a very long one. So nice to have a friend around. And also Taylor's about to play four shows in Sydney, back to back to back to back. So she's gonna be busy. She's gonna have a lot of stuff going on. So it's nice that Travis can have someone to like, you know, go go and do stuff with or just just hang out with when, uh, when, when Taylor's doing her show and then obviously recovering post-show. So as I mentioned, Travis touches down and, you know, jet lag has nothing on Travis Kelsey because he and Taylor and Ross and Sabrina Carpenter and some other people were actually spotted at the Sydney Zoo on Thursday. This is funny because Taylor went to the Sydney Zoo the day before, I believe, or maybe it was two days before, but she had, she had already gone to the zoo with like her dancers and her backup singers. Um, but she thought, I guess she felt like, hey, this is a pretty cool place. Let's go back. It's also probably one of the very few places that she can go um, and like they can kind of block off certain areas and like keep it pretty safe and pretty secure for her. So she's not having to deal with like crowds and crowds of people. But again, helicopters, photographers were getting images of them like feeding kangaroos and looking at all the looking at all the animals and stuff, which is really fun. So happy they made it down there. Like I said, we are in for a lot of Travis Kelsey at the Ares Tour content coming up. I'm sure tomorrow's show, we'll be breaking down night one of the Sydney shows, what Taylor sings, how Travis reacts. Like we've got, we've got a lot to look forward to in the coming days. And I, for one, cannot wait. Okay, let's move on to our next story. 
Greta Gerwig has reacted to her Barbie Best Director snub. Now, if you've been following this story, if you're familiar with Oscars nominations and just movie news in general, you will know that when the Oscar nominations came out, Greta was unfortunately snubbed. Snubbed might not be the right word depending on how you feel about it, but she was not included in the Best Director lineup. And a lot of people were upset about her omission because not only was that movie very well directed, but it was one of the biggest, most successful films of the year. And it was a bummer to not see her included. Well, Greta has sort of revealed how she feels about it. So she actually told um, Time in an interview for, for Time Magazine that a, a friend's mom came up to her and said that she was really upset or like sad that she didn't get a nomination. And Greta actually said, I did, I got an Oscar nomination because, which is true, she did get an Oscar nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay, which she wrote this, the screenplay for Barbie with her husband, Noah Baumbach, another filmmaker. Um, and then she said, her the, the mom's friend um, said, oh, that's wonderful for you. And then Greta said, I know. <laughs> So I guess all this to say, yes, she didn't get the director nomination, but Greta is choosing to focus on the fact that she did get an Oscar nomination. She was she was nominated for Best Screenplay, Adapted Screenplay. Barbie got a Best Picture nomination. Um, she went on in the article to talk about how she was bummed that Margot didn't get recognized in the Best Actress category. But like I said, Margot's a, a producer on, on the film, so she was technically nominated in the Best Picture category. And they'll all get to be there and celebrate together. And I, as much as people might be upset about the Greta snub, if you will, Greta's okay. You know, she's gotten her best director nomination for Lady Bird. She's, she's gotten a lot of recognition and has had a lot of success in her career. She's made three films and they've all been super, super successful. And I, I really feel pretty confident in the fact that she will win the best director Oscar at some point in her career. She's she's still like relatively young in the world of filmmaking. I mean, when you have people like Martin Scorsese and Clint Eastwood and Steven Spielberg making movies like well, well into their, you know, older age, um, Greta, I think she's gonna be okay. All right, final story of the day. Misha Barton revealed that she had a relationship with her OC cast member. Misha was on the Call Her Daddy podcast that was out, that came out Wednesday, and she revealed that um, not only did her character Marissa have a relationship with Ben McKenzie's character Ryan, but they actually dated in real life as well. Now, I think this was kind of like a, not a open secret. I think people felt like maybe these two were actually together, um, but she revealed in the interview that it was complicated to say the least, because when they started making the show, Misha was 17 and Ben was 25, which is a bit yikes. Um, she said that the age gap was a bit tricky for everyone. And this is what, what she said. I was experiencing all my firsts and I was so young and my mom would be on set and I just needed a lot more attention in that sense. So it was just a complicated time for her. Obviously the characters dated, they dated it in, in real life, no spoilers here, but if you've watched the OC, you know what happens with um, with her character um, over the course of the show. They're, they're also not the only co-stars to, to have dated. Obviously, I think most of us know Rachel Bilson and Adam Brody dated for a long time, but uh, this might explain a little bit more as to why this what happened to Marissa ended up happening because We've, I think we've all known when we've watched TV shows because co-stars dating is nothing new, but when co-stars date and then they break up, things can get tricky and complicated on set. And sometimes these shows have to make a decision as to who to keep and who to let go. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That is today's show. Let me know in the comments what you think of all these different stories. If you are a Swifty and you're excited for the uh, the Travis Taylor Sydney shows that are to come, let me know. If you have any um, guesses as to what Taylor's surprise songs are gonna be, 
with Travis in attendance, let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.